this episode of Sea Level, I talk with Bob Rathbun, announcer for the NBA Atlanta Hawks. So, Bob, thank you for coming down. My pleasure. Um, so, I know a little bit of your background, but for the small percentage of people that don't know you, to, give me a, give me your story. How did you get started out? And... Sure. I grew up in Salisbury, North Carolina. Okay. Uh, my my dad was transferred in the company he worked for, and it turned out to be probably the greatest thing that ever happened yeah. to the family yeah. and to me. Uh, and one day when I was 12 years old, I don't remember being prodded by my parents. Mm -hmm. I just did it on my own. I picked up the telephone and I called the radio station in our hometown. At 12? At 12 years old. Okay. WSTP, there you go. Salisbury, North Carolina. Yeah. And I told the announcer on duty. Now remember, this is a teeny tiny station. Right. And the announcer on duty, a gentleman by the name of John Bolser, answered the phone. And this is a thousand years ago, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I said to him, I love the station and I like listening to sports and all that. And he said, well, come on down. I'll give you a tour. So my mom and dad took me down and I got a tour of the station and instantly fell in love with it. Wow. And that turned into an every Sunday ritual where John would be announcing and I would go down and I would do stuff that 12 year old kids would do. Mm -hmm. Took out the garbage, you know, get the guy glasses. <laughs> do what you water. could, sweep the floor. Right, exactly. Yeah, right, right. And did things that now nobody knows what you're talking about. I filed records. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. Yeah. And I cleared the wire. Yeah. Yeah. Now you say that to somebody today. Yeah. Cleared the wire. Right. <laughs> what are you talking about? about? Yeah. Right. But, you yeah. know, those of us who know, right. it's the teletype. Right. And that's right. how the news came in. So that's what I did. And one Sunday, mm -hmm. the sportscaster showed up. And he said, well, if you love sports and you love radio, help us broadcast these American Legion baseball games. We had a great team, a state championship team. Mm -hmm. Everybody in town loved them, high school kids. And they, they packed the park mm -hmm. to watch them. And that's why the games were being broadcast on the radio. Wow. And I would keep stats and get the guy a hot dog. And that was it. Yeah. Until one day, uh, at age 12, the, uh, the announcer says, well, and I'll tell you his name in a minute. Yeah. He said, are you ready to make your debut? And I said, well, I guess I am. <laughs> and I got the mic at the bottom of the seventh inning of this baseball game. Oh, wow. And this team hit three home runs all season, two inside the park, and one when I had the mic. Oh, wow. Our first baseman, big left-handed hitting. A uh, guy named Joey Brown turns on yeah. oh, this is a, this is forever ago, yeah. and he turns on one, and skies it over the fence, over the scoreboard, over the coke sign, gone yeah. yeah. home run, and yeah. I got to call it. Oh wow! I have no idea what I said. <laughs> the excitement. But <laughs> the announcer got the mic back at the top of the eighth inning, and he said, "Ladies and gentlemen, I said, I've been waiting all season to call a home run. He said when we hit one." I got this 12-year-old kid on the mic. <laughs> that's awesome. And that's how it started for me. Wow. The announcer was Marty Brenneman. Oh. And if you're any baseball fans in the yeah. audience yeah. know him as the Hall of Fame announcer right. for the Cincinnati Reds, right. who is going to retire uh, in 2019 uh, at, at age 77, still going strong, but he's going to finally call it quits. And uh, he was just beginning his career at that point, coming out of college. And, uh, and so that's how we got linked at that age. And my voice was a little higher than <laughs> just at 12. Uh, you know, <laughs> the news guy called the. We had a female police yeah. dispatcher in Salisbury, and our news guy would call her to every morning to get the wrecks and whatever happened in town that night. Mm -hmm. And she said, Warner, did you listen to the American Legion ball game last night? Yes. Well, who was that little girl Marty had? Oh my on gosh! Broadcasting <laughs> the game. And that was that's me. Awesome. And that's how it started. Now wow. I didn't go back on the air. Yeah. Of course. Until uh, I was done with high school. In fact, I was a sophomore in college, mm -hmm. and I wor worked at the station, and I mm -hmm. worked at the newspaper in town. And the beginning of my sophomore year, I started at UNC Charlotte, mm -hmm. and I got a call from the station. They said, "Hey, the sports guy's leaving. Do you want the job?" There you go, and opportunity. I, said, I do. Mm -hmm. So I moved back in with mom and dad and my sister, and uh, went to work full time, and then went to school full time. Wow. So I, and I had the best of the best time 
any human being could have. That's awesome. It I, was I, so much fun. I, I love that story because, I mean, it's, it's, it's rare that you find, like, you, you instantly found Instant. your passion at such a very young age, and then you had the opportunity to be able to, even in school, right. work and, and, and be connected to it. So you had, a, you had an amazing opportunity. No, it was, with it that. was like charm life. Yeah. I mean, to have a key yeah. to the newspaper yeah. and a key to the radio station. Right. You know, as soon as I got my license, you know, I was covering games. And yeah. so it was, it was so great because I, as you look back, you see how lucky you are right. uh, with the mentors that you had. You know, Marty, mm -hmm. to us, I mean, as a teenager, it was just Marty. Yeah. Little did we know, this is like one of the greatest broadcasters right. of all time. Right. So he's one of your mentors. Yeah. We sent, including myself, we sent four people to the major leagues out of that little radio station. Wow. Marty, the news guy, Warner Fusel, mm -hmm. uh, became a, a major league announcer. Mm -hmm. uh, Doug Rice, who followed me, mm -hmm. uh, is still on the air calling NASCAR races, mm -hmm. uh, and all at that little radio station. How do you f how how do you feel like important mentors are like, especially in your career, like? How, how, how do you feel like oh, instrumental I, they are? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's crucial. Yeah. I mean, you know from yeah. the people you've talked to. Yep. Uh, you, you probably have not had anyone in this chair that hasn't been affected positively by a mentor. Right. And I try to do that to the young people that reach out to me to mm -hmm. say, hey, I want to get on the air. I want to do what you do and all that stuff. Isn't it a great feeling? It. Isn't it a great feeling to give it back? It is, but yeah. I still have grace to get through High Point yeah. University, so they can't have my job yet. Right. But in time, <laughs> right. yes, right. I right. encourage right. them. Like, Let me have a few more years, right. and then you can take it. Right. But uh, yeah, it, I, it's important because that's how this business keeps unfolding. Right. And uh, mentors are very important. And it wasn't just sports casting. Mm. You know, I had mentors at Catawba. I was a speech major and the head of the department just completely retooled my voice and mm. diction, pronunciation, pacing, strength, everything. Right. Uh, you couldn't buy that. Yeah. I mean, even though you're, you know, I was a day student, and you still had the time at a small school where the kids that go to the big, the big places mm. now don't get that kind of right. exposure but I had mentors in the newsroom at the newspaper. Mm -hmm. You know, I learned that AP style book mm -hmm. when I was a kid and lessons I still use today. Yeah. Um, I'd write a story, they'd kick it back to me, the assistant sports editor said, it's terrible, do it over. And you're on a deadline. Mm -hmm. But it, that taught me how to write. And right. It taught me, right. you know, to what a deadline was mm -hmm. and how do you organize your thoughts and all that stuff. Here, here's a thought. What do you feel is more impactful, or maybe this depends on the individual, but like the education or the hands-on, like you literally had hands-on. What right. do you think is more impactful, or do you think it depends well, on the individual? Well, I only know this business, mm -hmm. um, but I would say the hands-on yeah. is much more. Yeah. Because you've got to, it's, it's something you can't learn in the classroom. Right. You know, to get in front of the camera uh, or to have a microphone, Right. Uh, you have to perform. Yep. You have to be able to deliver. Yep. Particularly in sports where you're ad-libbing everything. There's right. no script. Right. There's so no script. you've got to you've got to have the wealth of knowledge of the background of mm -hmm. your what you're covering. Yep. But in terms of execution, uh, it's definitely a hands-on business. Go do and it. that's why I tell young people that you've you've got to be able to speak. Right. And speak well. Right. Whether or not you ever go on the air. Right. And it's sadly, Chris, it's something we're losing. Yeah. Uh, as technology continues to grow and kids stay on their phones 24 hours a day like they do today, mm -hmm. they're losing the interpersonal communication skills. Yeah. And I try to go back and tell them, I said, you know, there comes a time when you're going to be out of high school, mm -hmm. you're going to be out of college, and you're going to have to get a job. Yeah. That entails an interview. Mm -hmm. That entails speaking to someone who's older than you, right. doesn't look like you, right. and may not share your values mm -hmm. and understand you, but you, as the applicant, have to fi figure out a way to bridge that. Right. And you do that with your communication. Right. And the other thing I tell them is, look, in today's age, there may be a hundred, a thousand kids with pretty much an identical resume. Mm -hmm. 
going for the same job. Right. What is going to make you stand, stand out? out? Right. Especially if you're getting a job where communication skills are important. Yep. Uh, than the other 4,999. Right. 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 And that is a skill to to work at. Mm -hmm. To and. We're not getting that in the schools. We're not getting that uh, in and I colleges think, a great deal. Yeah, and I think I think that's like it comes with the practice too. Like get out and, and yes. do these types of things. Mm -hmm. and, and I talk to a lot of filmmakers, right, and a lot of first time like actors and people that are studying, right. you know, stepping first first time in front of the camera. The more times you do it, because I'm a firm believer, same thing, hands on, right? right? Like I will literally just like go and do it mm -hmm. and and just you know it, learn from my mistakes and just keep right. getting better and better and better right. and and i think um when people do that they get the hands-on experience but they're getting the practice so when they are going out and they're getting the job and stuff like that too and they're they're you know um communicating with somebody mm -hmm. right they're going to be more efficient at it they're going to be better than you know if, again being stuck on the phone and, yeah. and you know not not being able to communicate you are going to need to interview you are going to need to um if you're, you're planning on working for somebody right you're planning on doing something even clients too you need to right. communicate it's like even if you want to be because there's a lot of entrepreneurs it's the new sexy thing now mm -hmm. it's like everybody wants to be an entrepreneur it's like well you need to have good communication right. skills to close those deals because exactly. and and part of that is listening, listening to the client, listening to exactly what that person wants. Mm -hmm. So whether whether you're interviewing for a job, you know, or interviewing or or um, trying to close a deal, you have to have those good communication skills in order to in order to advance in your career. So. And it doesn't have to be formalized. Right. Uh, you can get in front of a mirror mm -hmm. uh, and grab a newspaper or a magazine right. and just start reading. Yep. To practice, yep. To hone those skills. Yep. Um, I always encourage, particularly the college students I talk to, mm. take an if you if you want to be a sportscaster, take an acting class. Yes. It has yeah. nothing to do with sports, right? But it's going to teach you how to get up on that stage. Yep. And I said, you know, delivering lines to an audience is a lot different than talking to a camera. Right. Different skill set because right. your eyes, you're getting immediate feedback. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're doing a line that's going to deliver an emotion, you get a it laugh right away. Or yep. Whatever, yep. you're going to get that feedback immediate response. immediately. Yep. You don't get that here. Nope. <laughs> you know, you're just talking to, to the camera. Yeah. Uh, same thing with giving a speech. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I encourage my students that ask me uh, to like get involved in Toastmasters. Mm -hmm. uh, give a free speech. Right. You'll find out right away. Yep. Uh, whether or not you're connecting with your audience because you can see yep. if they're engaged with you. If you look out there and in three minutes people are checking their phones, yeah. you Doesn't fail <laughs> as a yeah. speaker. Right, right. Yeah. And that's and that's important. I mean, it's you know you're you're and, and doing more of that, like trying to get out, you know, you mm -hmm. can speak at a chamber event. There's places right. like you can speak that like you don't need like your own booking agent and all that other right. stuff. Like there's right. little small little things you can do. Just stand up and speak in front of you know your friends or family if you're you know you're just getting started and then eventually just you know find opportunities to speak at functions you know whether mm -hmm. it's a, a chamber event or or what have you mm -hmm. getting that experience because i think a lot of people and especially all these kids like they they see somebody up on stage and they're just they're rocking the crowd you know and they get right. responsible like oh yeah i'm gonna go do that but they don't see what it took and all the other speaking engagements that speaker had to have before that yeah. to be prepared to actually get on stage for 50, 100,000 people, right? It doesn't just happen like that. I think a lot of people, they, they see the, the finalized product. Mm -hmm. They don't see all the work right. that it took to get to that point. Yeah, no question. Yeah. And, you know, in my business, it's one of those things that it looks so easy mm -hmm. from the outside. Right until you get in it yep. and you say, mm, wait a minute, I don't, I don't know yeah, about that. Right, right. You mean you gotta get up at five in the morning? <laughs> you gotta stay till, the, you know, they don't, yeah. they don't understand that. But it, it, even, we talk about, again, we, we tend to think about the big event mm -hmm. or the big presentation. It doesn't have to be that. Mm -hmm. You can, if you're in a business where you have to give a presentation uh, in your work group, right. And it could be five, six, eight people. Right. But you're the one that's charged with, okay, we have a new challenge. Mm -hmm. We're putting a plan together, and you've got to address the group. Yep. That's a great speaking opportunity. And here's the key for improvement. 
have somebody with an iPad mm -hmm. record it. Yep. And then you could go back and watch it. Critique yourself. Yeah. Yep. And you say, ooh, ooh yeah. I didn't know that. Right. And I didn't yep. smile. I didn't make eye contact. The nervous twitches yep. and all and that I, stuff. Yep. I kept saying, um, yeah, and, um, um. Right. <laughs> and it, it'll jump right back out at you. Yeah. So if you're serious about speaking, mm -hmm. record it, yep. watch it back, and then the next time, you'll have a stronger presentation. Yep. And, 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 that's, and that's the biggest thing, too, is work to get better. Always work to get better. Yes. Always work to say, all right, how can I, how can I make this you know, uh, a little bit more of, of my, my vision of me on the stage? Like, I want to get closer mm -hmm. to that. So what are some of the nuances that I have that I can tweak right. to get to that level? And I think you know, doing that, um, you know, it just, it, again, it, if you're working to get yourself better, you will be better. And the mm -hmm. dedication um, is, is going to be important. Just you know, keep, keep consistently making yourself better, mm -hmm. consistently pushing yourself, challenging yourself. And, and you'll make it, you'll, you'll get to where you want to go. Yeah, one of the, you know, I get the old school, mm -hmm. you know, you're just old school. Well, I just think there's one way to do it. And I, I was never one when I was growing up that mm -hmm. was party boy, yeah. you know, that was trying to, you know, hit the social scene. Mm -hmm. uh, I would much rather go to a game. Yeah. And I, I wanted to see the game, but I also wanted to watch the guys work. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to watch the TV production. I wanted to watch the announcers. How did they handle themselves? What yes. did they do? Yep. And then I also wanted to watch the writers. Yeah. You know, how do you cover the game? What are the tricks? Yeah. And it, it was so much better for me yeah. to do it that way than hang with the crowd right. and not do it and maybe you know go down and have a beer with the right. guys and all right. that stuff i'd rather learn the craft have been in that because yeah. all the people that i hung around did it that way yeah you right. know we didn't think about missing games right or taking vacations during the season right. and stuff like that right. we were Entrenched totally in, in yeah and 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 the fact that again you're you were dedicated you wanted to learn every aspect of it, yes. right? The writers, and, and I say that a lot in the, in, the, in the movie business, you know, learn every bit, if you're an actor, learn a little bit about production, like learn about editing. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be an expert in that, I get it, that's not your passion, but learn a little bit about it so you know how the whole process works. Don't mm -hmm. just be a, I always say, don't be a one pony show, you know, right. learn, learn a little bit about everything and, and it's great that, you know, that that's one of the things that, that you did is learning all the aspects of right. it. So tell me, I, I want to know from you, because I know, I know you did a lot of announcing on a lot of these games. Uh -huh. What was like one of your most, what was something that stuck out to you? What was a favorite, favorite game uh, moment for you? You know, I get that question yeah. all the time. Yeah. And my answers are a little different, because you'd think, you know, the great big game, and mm -hmm. oftentimes the big game did not really produce the big moment. Mm -hmm. When I was coming along and I broadcast my first NCAA tournament game on the radio, mm. was to me as big a moment as calling a World Series or wow. calling a Super Bowl yeah. because I finally made it. Yeah. I finally got to do this. Yeah. And my team, Old Dominion University in Norfolk, Virginia, <laughs> ends up playing UCLA, UCLA. Yeah. <laughs> in the NCAA tournament, right. and my broadcast location at Arizona State was right next to KMPC Los Angeles. Wow. And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> they have, you know, 10 people. Yeah. They got engineers for engineers. Right, right, right. 16 announcers and a right. two-hour pregame show, and yeah. I've got my little old setup. <laughs> but it was moments like that. Yeah. Uh, that really stood out to me. You know, the first time I went to work for CBS was mm -hmm. pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, just because I had worked at a CBS affiliate for mm -hmm. so long, on right. radio and then later on television. So those things meant more to me. Now to the public, mm -hmm. uh, the games that, that stand out for me, uh, I was doing the Braves when Andres Galarraga came back from cancer and hit mm -hmm. a home run, and that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but I think the, the one stretch uh, was when the Hawks went on that incredible tear four years ago yeah. Oh, yeah. and won 60 games and went unbeaten in the month of January, won 19 straight, mm -hmm. and the whole town was on fire. Yeah. And it wasn't one game. It was that whole stretch of games because everybody was watching every night. It was just like the Braves in 91, worst right. to first. Yep. 
where everybody was just totally swept up in it. Mm -hmm. You know when you drop your shirts off at the dry cleaners mm. and the little old lady with blue hair comes to the door <laughs> and says, aren't our hawks doing well? <laughs> and then you know yeah. everybody is yeah. in. Everybody's in. Yep. <laughs> everybody's yep. in. Yep. And that, so that was a great, great stretch. You know, first time we ever made it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah. Uh, and to call that stretch was really pretty special. That's awesome. That's cool. That's really cool. So yeah. you have a new book. Let I me, do. Yeah, let's, let's talk about that. So what's your book sure. about? And yeah, it's called A Fast Forward Winner. Okay. Um, as you, and any of us in my position gets called to speak to, you know, MC banquets, athletic banquets, and, right. and all this. And over the years, I was asked to speak to a lot of high schools and college job fairs and, you know, um, career day mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't have anything. I just had my notes. And I said, well, let me put something together. Mm -hmm. So it's basically, it's more of a workbook than it is a book book, you okay. know. Um, not the great American novel, right. not quite yet, <laughs> not there, but I wanted yeah. to give, a, give the kids a workbook. And I call it the fast forward winner because I want you to take where you are, see a goal, fast forward to that goal, mm -hmm. then make the steps, uh, work the steps to get there. Okay, and that's where the title came from. And it's a six step process. It's basically let the secret out here. Mm -hmm. Don't tell anybody. Uh oh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> but it's, it's basically my story. Cool. It's the six steps that I, looking back, that I went through. Uh, to get to where I was in, in the broadcasting industry, but I think it's applicable across the board, mm -hmm. particularly today, because young people have a tendency uh, not to want to get out of their comfort zone. Right. Uh, and I think a lot of it, at least the kids that I've come in contact with, and we've lived here 24 years in Atlanta, their dreams get squashed mm -hmm right in the embryonic stage. Mm -hmm. Because in my view, they make the mistake of telling somebody, mm -hmm. I wanna be a singer, mm -hmm. I wanna be a dancer. Mm -hmm. You can't sing, yeah. you can't dance. And everybody in the shell Climbs up. Yep. You know, comes back. Yeah. And you know from acting yep. how oh, yeah. tough it can be. Oh yeah. My encouragement to anybody who, who takes up the book and wants to go through the six steps, is keep that to yourself. Mm -hmm. there, of the six steps, three are inside, mm -hmm. three are outside. I said, while you're working on this yourself, don't tell anybody. Yeah. Don't tell your mom, dad, brother, sister, cousin. Mm -hmm. Keep it to yourself. But do tell a mentor. Mm. If you want to broadcast, and I can speak for my colleagues, we all encourage those interested mm -hmm. to reach out to us will help you right. if you're serious about this right. we will help you so that now you can get some inside info from those of us in the business yeah. and I think that's true with just about every aspect of yep. the business world yep. if you want to go to new Rubbermaid right. and figure out how to make the new you know car seat for right. babies right uh, there's gonna be somebody there so oh well, as a matter of fact, we've had 78 models in the right. last 50 years, and right. this is what we've come up with. Right. Automatically, you're establishing a rapport that you're not going to get anywhere else. Yeah. And especially in the arts, you know, if you yes. want to sing, dance, broadcast, stage, go to someone who's been there yeah. and can tell you, well, you might want to try this, 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 and this. Right. And as you do that, you're building confidence. Mm -hmm. You're researching your topic. If you want to be a sportscaster, you better learn sports. Right. Because you can't fool your audience. The sports audience knows more about it than you do. Right. At least starting off. Right. So you better dedicate yourself to learning. Yeah. And here are some ways to build up that learning. Mm -hmm. Then work on it and try it and see how it is. Mm -hmm. Then move to the last three steps. Now. Now when you're confident, a little bit of confidence, mm. take it to the marketplace. Right. You know, go to a radio station, go to a TV station. Mm -hmm. You'll get that feedback too. Go the to market, a guidance counselor, the, right. The market will tell right. you if you're exactly. good or not. Exactly, if they like it, if they don't like it. Yep. And I, the fifth chapter is a 20 second timeout, mm. which is, you know, like mm -hmm. pro basketball. Yeah. Just take a quick timeout, right. reassess. Yep. And then how do you hit the curveballs? Because nobody goes through this business mm -hmm you know, unchallenged, right. you know, you're going to get a million no's right. about jobs that you apply for. I don't know that I've ever gotten a job I applied for. It was always, 
you know, friend of a friend, and mm-hmm. this lined up, and Jupiter was aligned with <laughs> Mars, and, right. and you get the job. Uh, so you're going to get a lot of no's, and how do you handle that? Yeah. How do you handle those curveballs that come your way? So if you go through the six steps, I think you'll be pretty successful. Yeah. But the key point you made a minute ago about trying everything and acting, so true about broadcasting. Mm-hmm. You know, I tell the students, I say, you know, everybody looks at the announcers, the glamour position, because that's what you see, yeah. right? Right. But there's an army of people behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. It's sort of like the buffet, mm-hmm. you know, just go down the line yeah. and try the asparagus and try, you know, something else. Because you may find, I thought I wanted to be an announcer, but that's mm-hmm. not for me. Right. I want to be the audio guy. Right. I want to be the producer, yep. the director, yep. the technical director. Yep the stage manager, yep. you know, I, that's, uh, but I'm involved. Mm-hmm. And I, t- I tell kids, I said, look, I work for the Atlanta Hawks. Mm-hmm. We have 300 or so employees. Mm-hmm. Only 15 of them are basketball players. Mm. The other 285 yep. are doing everything else. Yep. Coaching, selling tickets, working in the arena, you name it. But guess what? Yep. We are all in the NBA. I, I love that. I love that. We're and here, all here, here's the reason why is because you're, you're trying all these things, and then sometimes you'll find out that you're really good. You, you know, I get a lot of like entrepreneurs and people that want to be CEOs and stuff come up to me, and you know, the number 17 at Facebook is pretty well off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't necessarily have to always be the number one or on the court. There's a lot of other people. Like I, I, I always use an analogy in movies. Have you ever seen movie credits? I mean, there's a lot of people that work behind the scenes. It's not always the person in front of the camera. Right. There's a lot of other parts that need your talents and your skills, and you might just find out that you like that more mm-hmm. than what it is. So I think the biggest thing is to do that. Test these things out. Try them out. See what your passion is, what lights you up, which makes you excited, and, and, and do that. Yeah. But you just might find out. It's not always being the star player on the court. It might be someone behind the scenes. It's, it's the old concentric circles yeah. test. Write down what I like to do. Mm-hmm. Write down what you're good at. Yep. And then write down what you can make money at. Right. And where the three come For together, me, yep. there's your sweet spot. Start there. That's awesome. Awesome. Hey, Bob, I really appreciate it. Thanks oh, for coming welcome. out. Good you're welcome. Good seeing you. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for having me. I was, I was on. Hey guys, thanks for tuning into the episode. If you guys enjoyed it, show some love, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe. Also, make sure you check out our exclusive C-Level group on Facebook.